So the following slides demonstrate a typical architecture of a Mac and controller with an ARM Cortex M core. So ARM is a company who designed the core and the bus system. And then other companies, so silicon vendors such as NXP, purchase a license or the intellectual property to use the design of the core in their own uh, microcontrollers. So NXP would add in their own flash memory, their own RAM, their own peripherals and power blocks to create a fully functioning microcontroller unit and we're using the ARM core. And our companies can also purchase designs for peripherals as well as they don't want to design their own. So look at the block diagram, typical block diagram here of a Mac controller. So we've got our um, actual core, so this is actually says CPU. We've got memory for instructions, the flash memory, memory for data, so RAM. Um, we've got various peripherals. So these are the things that can connect up. We can connect external things up to the circuit, up to the Mac controller. And then we've also got you know, something inside to generate the clock. So the core is essentially the thing that's designed by ARM. And then a company like NXP would put, you know, essentially buy the IP for that div, um, design of the core. And they would design, they, you know, NXP would design the memory, so the flash and the RAM, the clock generation, the peripherals, and the JTAG. That's who use the JTAG is how we um, upload the code and do debugging and so on. So these are the things that are designed by NXP. And then NXP would also design the bus system. So the bus system is what links all the things together. So that's based on a kind of set of protocols. Uh, you know, designed by, um, so you can see, it's not just NXP designing the home art controller, they purchase the design for the actual core, the CPU, if you will, from ARM, um, and then base the bus on ARM designs. So we've previously seen examples, we've seen the memory is containing both instructions and data, and these, have, you know, the instructions and the data have been in the same bus, and they've shared the same, so they've been in the same memory, and they've shared the same bus that connects them to the CPU. So this is what's known as a von Neumann architecture. So this is essentially where you've got a memory. So this is this is a CPU. You've got one bus what connects it, and then inside this one memory, we've got instructions, and we've got data. So that's called a von Neumann architecture. But this kind of architecture can cause a bottleneck because multiple memory needs, you know, need to read. If we want to do an operation, we need to get an instruction into the CPU and we also need to get the data as well. So we need to kind of read back and forth across this memory a few times. So this causes a, a bottleneck. But there's another architecture called a Harvard architecture. Now this is where the instructions of the data are stored in different memories, so actually physically separate memories and they've got separate buses too. So in this in a Harvard architecture we'd have a CPU that be connected up, you know, have one bus connect to a memory what contains instructions and one what contains data. So it means then instructions and data fetches can occur simultaneously. So while we're fetching data, we can be fetching instructions at the same time. So this is can lead to performance increase compared to uh, Von Neumann's. So my controls are typically Harvard machines. So in an ARM Cortex M3 processor, instructions are typically stored in, in the flash memory. And then this is then connected to the actual core using the, the I code and D code buses. So these two buses allow for high performance than if you're just fetching instructions over a single bus Data is stored in a completely separate memory, so the RAM or SRAM, and this is connected to the core using the system bus. Now the system bus is also used to connect the core to the peripherals. So if we look at that previous uh, Mac control architecture diagram, we can see the actual core is connected to the flash memory over the I and the D core bus. You know, the, all the buses share this uh, bus matrix. 
this uh, multi-layer advanced high performance bus matrix you know so all the different buses share that but here but essentially the flash is connected to the core via the i code and the d code buses now we've got the ram so this is again sep completely physically separate memory what can typically used to store data so that's then connected to the core using the system bus so the core will be connected to the data over this so there's flash will go between the i and the d code uh, and the instructions over flash will go over the i and the d code and then the sram so the data in sram will go over the system bus so these are two separate buses what you know this is kind of characteristic of the harvard architecture and also the um the system bus is used to connect up the peripherals so we've got our external peripherals but then they're connected so they're on all the peripherals are on this advanced peripheral bus which is connected to the this bus matrix using the AHB to APB bridge so if you want to you know the if the core's doing something if it if it's interfacing with these peripherals you know, it does it over the system bus So the peripherals are completely separate circuits that enable the mark control to interface with sensors, displays and actuators. And the peripherals themselves actually contain registers, so they can typically contain a small amount of memory inside of the peripherals that are used to configure the peripheral. So going back to this diagram, we've obviously got memory here, one lot of memory, so the flash memory of the instructions, the RAM another memory what contains the data and then each each of these peripherals also contains a small amount of memory in the form of registers that we use to configure the behavior of these peripherals so there's three you know three kind of blocks of memory will instruct you know, the flash the ram and then the memory associated with the peripherals but these are memory mapped which basically means they're all given an address in a kind of continuous list and they just appear to be part of the same memory as the instructions and the data. So the flash and the RAM and the peripherals all appear to be in the same memory because they're all, you know, they share this kind of contiguous address space despite being physically separate. So this is known as a unified memory map. So we'll look at this example here. So this is showing our, um, so th this entire block here. So this is a 32 um, bit system. So we're not two to the 32, you know, it gives rise to this four gigabyte address space. We can see, um, we can see here. So we go from zero, 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 all the way up to zero, F, 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 F. So, so, so all um, this is the entire address space but then this bottom part here so this is the I and the D code memory space so they go from ad addresses 0 up to here so that's where the code so the instructions are stored in these address spaces so this is the flash memory then they got the RAM what's completely you know, completely physically separate separate circuit, but its addresses start when the flash finishes and go up to here. So even though the two separate um, circuits, two separate memories, you know, when you're writing the software, it doesn't. When you're referring to, you don't have to do anything. That, you know, don't have to take into account if you're like there in these different memories. You can just use the different addresses from here. Then we've got one lot of peripherals, so on APB0, there's this set of peripherals, so they belong in this, this memory region between here. Then we've got another set of peripherals, APB1, so they're in this memory space here. So all these different circuits, so and they've got another, this other set of peripherals, that's in this memory space here. So even though we've got all these diff different memories, we've got flash memory, 
we've got RAM, and then we've got all the registers, what make up these different peripherals. They're all part of this same unified memory map.